Greetings all, the Devious Monkey here. Today's just sort of been a cleanup kind of a day. Yesterday's video was me whining about the fact that the Aperture 4 Light Travel Kit didn't come with four sets of accessories. Okay, I'm over it, I'm done. I went to AliExpress, went to the Aperture store, and ordered two silicone diffusers for the remaining two lights that don't have diffusers. And they should be here the end of April. <laughs> okay, patience is not my strong point, but it is what it is. I have since yesterday set everything up. So all the cameras are charged. All of them have been synced with the Citus app and I have gotten them all set up and the cables ran and cinched down and so on and so forth. Continuing with the fake acinetone theme that I've got going on, I also, once I got all the new lighting set up, went through and did another custom white balance. So I set the Cinerig up, I mean, just the same way that it always is, but I also set up the run and gunner a6600 and of course I used my little monopod with my gray card and I had all the lights on ready to go set up because I kind of goofed up at some point I guess when I was playing around with getting them all set up they got switched to 3200 instead of 5600 which is what I wanted them to be and I took the white balance and realized that wait a minute why the hell do those have that weird hue to them and then realized ah crap it got set to 32 so I went back fixed them all again, set everything up again, and took another custom white balance for both cameras. Then with the run and gunner, I was actually in my Forerunner earlier today, and I did a custom white balance in the Forerunner. That's not gonna change all that much. Yeah, it might be sunny out, yeah, it might be a little cloudy out, blah, 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 but for the most part, you know, I'm inside the vehicle, and it's gonna be what it's gonna be. So I set that up, and shot this footage which you can now see and you know I mean I, again I think that this fake acinetone is it's rocking I mean I, I like the colors I think everything is sort of true to what my eyeball sees and it also will now allow me to continue being a lazy editor and not doing any color grading so I'm pretty happy with that I again despite the fact that I was a little miffed about there not being four sets of accessories for that uh, Aperture MC travel kit. I still love them. It's not like I'm not gonna use them and I'm going to boycott them or cancel them. I mean, they're great. As I suspected, having one of those lights as my main light in here, along with the other ones, because I mean, I have right there, instead of the Photo Deox LED panel that I had, that was all Frankenstein with the you know the diffusing thing rubber banded to it. I now have one of the MC lights going on there, and I only have it at 35%. And there's more than enough light. I have my right side light that is connected to the arm of the monitor stand for the overhead shots, sitting there on a clamp with a magic arm at 15%. I have another MC light up there on one of those aperture mini ball heads connected to a telescoping selfie stick that I got from my company years ago and I have that cinched down to the extended arm of the monitor uh, pole that I had there that's holding the ZV-1 and I have that extended out and that's on there that's at 15 percent of course I have my lemony yellow MC light up there and then Ron and the lamp so that's it oh and the fairy lights Although they're getting a little bit harder to see, so I think that my rechargeable batteries need to be recharged or probably just thrown away and I need to get new ones. I think that this looks really good on both cameras. And if I'm looking at both screens now, uh, again, Cinerig has the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. Run and Gunner in the studio has the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 with the tripod pushed back a little bit to sort of give me where it was when I was using the 18 and 105 at 24 millimeters. And my melon isn't like, hi. And I think that as far as like the color rendition and everything, everything looks exactly the same on both monitors. So I'm looking at the Ninja, I'm looking at the A6600 screen there, and I think that, that everything looks pretty similar. I mean, to my eye, 
it, it matches. I think we're good to go. And I think the colors are all good. And if I hold up all my bracelets and all that kind of stuff. So the one that I got for my wife that, that looks like a bunch of whatever those candies were, like the colors are right. So I think we're good to go there. So that one's sort of right there, shining down on me this way. And this one is shining down towards the table to give the overhead shot more light, which I'm not doing right now because I'm not showing you anything that I got. And we're good to go there at this point in time. Finally, my studio setup is done. I don't need anything else. I've got my camera all good to go, built as the center rig. I've got my run and gunner. If I want to do a second angle in the studio, good to go. And of course I change that all the time. But as far as like having the white balance and the, the distance away and all that kind of stuff, it is completely set. All my lights now are done and they're all those little aperture MC lights and I have cables running to power them all and they all power off the same power strip that I have plugged in here that can all run off the gold mount battery if I were to take this out mobily, which I won't. But if I did, yeah, I could I could power that up right there. Of course, I'm not gonna take these two lights with me and the, and the overhead setup and all that shit, but you get the idea. In studio, everything is running off that, that single source of power and yeah, everything is contained right within this little corner of my studio office and that's perfect. It, what's even better is that now if I open up the, the blinds and all that kind of stuff or I turn the lights on, I don't have that gigantic softbox basically eclipsing the lights and making that side of the office slash studio dark. So I have lights everywhere right now. The only thing that's on is stuff that's in the studio and you would be surprised at how contained it is right here because it's dark over there except for the screens on and everything and I shut the TV off because Black Hawk Down was on and there's a lot of explosions and lights and all that stuff and it will change the way this looks. But other than that, everything in here in this corner is self-contained for filming, for doing this. I'm not changing it anytime soon. Again, if you followed me along in my journey, or even if you just go back and look through my videos, you'll see how many videos are labeled, you know, Devious Monkey Studio Tour or things like that, or I'm finally done. Until today, I wasn't finally done. I was continuing to tweak, but I promised I wasn't gonna keep shooting you every day, you know, when I changed the light or changed an angle or something like that. It's done. It's completely done. I will say this here now to all of you. My studio setup is done. I'm not changing anything. I'm not changing my background. I'm not buying stuff. I'm not painting anything. I'm not changing the lights, nothing. This is what it's gonna look like when I'm in this studio from now on for the foreseeable future, which will be a while because I'm just not changing it. That being said, now what I need to do is I need to start coming up with some better content and I need to start getting outside more. Fortunately, although it isn't as warm as it has been in past years, this time of year, it has at least stopped raining for a while and for at least the next week, it isn't supposed to rain knock on wood. So I plan on going outside and doing some stuff. I don't know what the botanical gardens look like. I haven't been there in a while, but right now is usually the time of year where they're sort of getting set for spring. So there might not be all that much there, but at least I can go outside and get some exercise walking around. So that might be coming this week-ish as well. Bottom line for this video, the studio's done. All the lights are set up and perfect. The fake S Cinetone is now on all the cameras, including the ZV-1. Although with the ZV-1, because it only has Cine-1 and Cine-2, it doesn't have 3 and 4, I kind of had to cheat. Instead of Cine-4, I had to use Cine-2. Otherwise, all the settings are the same that I have posted in the other videos about what settings I used for fake S Cinetone. And, you know, sort of yesterday I was playing around with it and I, I thought it looked good good enough. I mean, really, the only thing you're going to be seeing is products and my hands. You know, how good does it need to be? I'm happy with the way things have progressed. The studio now is in, in my heart of hearts. It's done. It's 100% complete and good to go. And I think that I've got enough as far as stabilizers or tripody type things or, or you know, build outs for quick run and gun and all that stuff. I think I'm good to go. I don't really need anything else. So, okay, that's it. It was sort of a like middle of the week roundup. I at least wanted to address the fact that now I am strictly using Aperture MC lights for all my in-studio lighting. And I'm pretty damn happy with it. Yes, I know I busted on them yesterday because I was a little miffed about 
the diffusers and so on and so forth, but that's just a small little inconvenience that I can deal with or that I have dealt with because now I've ordered them and they're coming in. That's it. That's all I've got for you today. I mean, if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. I, I welcome the interaction. And as always, thanks for joining me. Like, subscribe, and all that shit. And remember, kids, forward and up.